Our next in-person mastermind is coming up this fall and we're heading to Vegas. We're kicking off this mastermind with an in-person tour at Zappos Downtown Las Vegas campus, where you'll learn their strategies behind company culture, core values, employee engagement, and customer service. Looking outside the legal industry for business concepts and strategies allows you to gain fresh perspectives and innovative solutions that can be applied to improve and differentiate your firm's operations. Following the tour are the Mastermind Hot Seats. Every attendee has the opportunity to dive deep into their business obstacles with their mastermind group and coach. We believe that nothing beats working on your firm in person. So join us in Las Vegas on November 7th and 8th. This is your chance to break through barriers, spark new ideas, and accelerate your law firm's success. Limited spots are available. Visit maxlawevents.com for full event details and to grab your ticket today. Run your law firm the right way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What's up, Jimmy? I sat down the other day to do my immigration answer show, and I started off by saying, "Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast." So, <laughs> one of the one of the downsides of having multiple shows is you got to remember which show you're on. Uh, that is pretty funny. Well, like so, the, for the firm podcast that I do, it's essentially for clients. <laughs> I've done that with with Maximum Lawyer. It, it's like, and I don't even do, I don't even do your part. Like, I it's one of the things where yeah, you don't even go first. Yeah, exactly. So. It's uh, I, I've done that. I've done that before. I think it's pretty funny. This is the anniversary episode. This is hard to believe. Pretty exciting. Twenty sixteen. Eight years. It's it's absolutely crazy. So I got to tell this. I got to tell you this story. I was so you were you had COVID, so you were unable to go come to the to the mastermind, and I, I hopefully you're feeling better. You sound sound better. I can hear your voice is deeper, so hopefully it stays like this. It's still a little scratchy, but it does sound better. Yeah, the, I'm sure it doesn't feel fantastic, but you, you sound good. you sound pretty good now. So Charlotte Erdman, she um, we it was like snack time, so in the breaks, and she kind of like pulls me aside. And she says, "Do you remember the very first thing you had in St. Louis?" Uh, and I said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." It was at the law school. She's like, "Yeah," and can you believe like what like, what it's grown into? It, it's just amazing. And I was like, yeah, I was like, Jim and I talk about that quite a bit. It's pretty cool. And it was funny because uh, she was, she told me how nice the bathrooms were there. And I said, you know, and, and, and I had noticed the same thing. And I go, do you know what my favorite part of the, of the bathrooms are? And she goes, yeah, the, the, the paper towels. And I said, yes, it was, you, you know, the quality of a bathroom by the quality of the paper towels in the bathroom. But uh, I thought that I got a little good little chuckle out of that. But it was, it is, it is crazy to think of like where we started with just you and me on. I don't. What Skype. was that? Skype. Yes, yeah, like I, Skype's long gone now. I think, but I don't know if they're gone. But they, no one uses them. But we started on Skype, and now, now we, we've got masterminds all over the country. It's crazy. Well, someone came on the Immigration Answer Show this week, and he said, "Jim, I'm an accountant." And I want to tell you that I think that I and everybody else who watches your show have won the lottery. And I'm like, that's weird. Why do you say that? He said, well, I sat down and did some calculations as an accountant that I am. So you've done 635 episodes of the Immigration Answer Show. Each episode is about an hour long. I checked out to see what the lawyer rate for a partner in St. Louis would be. And I think that's like $450 an hour. But you're you know, the founding partner, so we're going to say 500 So 500 uh, dollars times 635 hours of content plus all your other stuff let's round it up to 700 and he came up with some crazy number of value to it and that that really made me laugh because he was the first caller of the day so that was a nice little thing um, but yeah I mean that you know when you think about a half hour at least every week for eight years you know that's that's four years worth of hours of content. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of talking. 
That is that is a that's and with you doing the show too. That is a ton of talking. It's mm. uh, no wonder your voice is, is is hoarse. So there was a brief time before I wised up where my office was back to back with Amani's, and this was probably two or three years into Maximum Lawyer, and she said, "Don't you do any work? All I ever hear you doing is talking on shows in there." <laughs> that that's one of the downsides of, of bringing Amani into the fold is that yeah. she got to see all the uh, all the playing around you're doing. <laughs> so now we're far apart. She's upstairs. I'm downstairs. I've got lots of separation. Amy and I are across the office from each other. So I'm on one end. She's on the other end. So I I get that you're on completely different areas. But like, how I, was the mastermind? It was good. It was really good. We we were obviously missing you. Um, that was that part was a bummer, but the, it, no, it was good. Becca picked amazing places to eat. Always the, does. Yeah, the dinner uh, just was. It was killer. It really was. The service was really really good. A place called Church and Union, and then the Rise Up guys. They did they did golf with with a few people, and then they also did brunch. Um, I was I was doing some other things, so I wasn't able to do to do brunch but the everyone that talked about brunch said it was amazing and the venue was was really good and the i i paul so paul yokobitis chipped in for you it uh, i heard amazing things out of that room and i i, I know one of the nights uh me paul yokobitis and christopher nicholas and we were all just kind of hanging out it was just cool to like talk business with the, with those two it was really neat um and then uh, my our, my group was great. The the we had Ryan Weber, which is Tiffany's husband, in there, and he's mm. he's not a lawyer. He's uh, he he's he works uh, in the firm, but he does more of the marketing stuff. It was just cool to have that different perspective in the room. And he he's a character. I call I I, I, I called him Jeremy a few times. I don't know in my head it, I had him stuck as a mm. Jeremy, but yeah, it was it was good. It was we missed you obviously, but it was it was a lot of fun. So this is this is the first time where we had non guild members in the mastermind. How how was that piece of it? It was it was uh, good. I I didn't realize it was, was that the first time. I thought we'd had it maybe once before. But. I mean, maybe in the old days before we came up with that rule, but it's the first time in a long time. Yeah. So we had um, we had a couple people that were non guild members, and it they they fit right in. It was cool. The like for example, Ryan. There was um, Katarina was someone else that was in that that had come. That was they. They were it was interesting. My my concern was is that people would be less willing to share. It was I wasn't super afraid of it, but I was a little concerned. And I just started mine this time by saying, "Listen, if you're not going to be honest with yourselves, and if you're not going to be honest with the group, there's no point in you being here." Right and. I think everyone took that to heart, and they were very open and honest. And you know, obviously, we can't discuss the details of what happened in there, but a lot of a lot of great sharing. And so they I, they fit right in. It was I thought, thought it was a pretty good mix. Well, you know, it's funny with eight years of podcasts and you know a couple of years of masterminds now. You know, I love and and I, I say this with the immigration clients that we have. You know, we have a lot of people at our firm who go through the same process. And if you sit back and pay attention, people really go through the process differently. And so you can really learn a lot about people and specific people by seeing how they handle the process. So you and I have certainly seen some weird people show up at that mastermind and act weird, right? And obviously we've had people, we've had moments of real vulnerability, real honesty. We've seen people have a breakdown or breakthrough, and then really just sort of take off after the mastermind. And I think with the podcast, it's the same way. We've had people, you you and I have had people on the show where getting them to answer a question is like pulling teeth. And we've had other people where literally in the half hour, I asked one question, you asked one question, and the people talked for 15 minutes straight without taking a breath so it's really funny if you sit back and watch people how 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 different people are. Yeah, some people are really closed off. I I, I think this is me guessing a little bit, but I think this is fairly accurate. 
the people that are typically the most successful tend to be the ones that share the most and they're the most open in the in the hot seats. I'm not talking about in general. I don't know about in general, but on the show and then in the hot on uh, on the actual hot seat when they're on the hot seat, they tend to be the most open. Would you agree with that? And vulnerable. Yeah, cuz yeah. if they're in, if you're not in touch with what's really going on, if you're not in touch with your body and your your mindset, if you're really disconnected and disassociated from yourself, I think it's really hard to make the progress. And I was listening to Jim Rohn the other day and he was like, look, if you're having kids, if you have kids, you might want to spend all this time and energy on making them better. But really, if you want to be a great parent, and I would translate this to a great law firm owner, then you really got to focus on making yourself better. And then they, by definition, will see you doing better and they'll learn on their own how to be better. Yeah. I think about that with employees too, or, um, the, the employees, uh, the, the, so you'll, you'll, what you'll do is you'll have a law firm owner talking about how their employees, they don't take initiative. They're afraid to do things like all these, like it makes it seem like the employees are bad. Right. And then it's interesting is that you start to pull back the layers, pull back the layers, pull back the layers, and they're not letting the employees do anything. They're not, they're not trust, they're not entrusting them with doing things. And so the employees don't feel confident. They don't take initiative. They do all these, they, they, they basically are a bad employee because you've created a bad employee. But, you know, so I, I think that the parenting thing is appropriate. The, the thing that I find the, the most, or my favorite part of of a, of a hot seat is the the holding back, the holding back, the holding back, the holding back. Okay, now we've we've hit somewhere. Okay, so someone starts to pull a thread. Someone else starts to pull a thread, and starts to, we start to connect the dots. And then you you they come in with an issue that they want to talk about, and the real issue is hiding de- beneath. We just got to get to it. So you know you're about two thirds of the way. Th- uh, through the hot seat, you finally figure out what the actual issue is, and then you can spend the rest of the time solving that issue. But I do, I find that those where it's like, oh, wait, everyone in the room goes, ah, oh, okay, we, that's what the problem is. I think that th- those, that, that's my favorite, fa- favorite part of the hot seats. If someone were to ask me, what, what have you and Tyson gained the most by having the podcast? I think that that is actually it. To me, it's it's this thing that we both have now where we can listen and if we're really listening it's almost like a, a little alarm goes off in your ear or like it it's almost like you know like when they do that sound effect of the record scratching like you'll we'll be talking to someone either on in a mastermind or one of our hot seats or even on the podcast and you'll just hear something and your ear goes and you just know this is where we pause. This is where we stop. This is where we this is where we mine for gold because this is where this is where the the really good stuff is. Yeah, there there will be times I I love have Marco Brown in the group because sometimes okay so and I'm, not, and I'm I'm saying this in a joking way but it's tr- it's true joking way sometimes people come in there and they'll just bullshit us they just yeah. bullshit us right and it's the same bullshit from three months ago exactly so. But Marco Brown and I would look at each other like giving us like giving each other like okay, we'll wait we'll wait, and then we're gonna start we're gonna start you know prying on, on pounds, this. yeah pounds. yeah it's because that's sometimes that's what it takes and you know you're you can give us this fluff all you want you can but but we're gonna dig in and so um, those 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 moments are fun too that's why Marco's because because it's funny because. Marco will tack from one side of the room. I'll tack from the other side of the room, and we'll kind of back and forth until we really get to the to, to the issue. Because that, that's what we're doing. We're just solving issues. Like that's what it, that's what it is. So that there, <laughs> Sandy Van is funny because Sandy Van's like, she wasn't there at this one, but she. We, we'll, we'll resolve it. All right, we're done with that. One. Let's move on to the next thing. It's like she's very wants to move on to the next thing, yeah. the next, the next thing. She she wants to solve as many many uh, problems as as possible. But it's just uh yeah, it's it's fun. I remember, too, that early on in our career, one of our first masterminds uh, with, on the Guild in the Facebook group, we, we did pounce, and somebody got really mad at us, and um, they didn't like 
that we were pushing back as hard as we did. And so we had to learn, you know, we had to learn how to back off and how to couch things. I think we've gotten a lot better at that. Yeah, I think that if we did it now, I think that we would have, it would be different because it's, I, and I, I do wonder if we were that hard or if we just had not gained their trust yet. Um, yeah. Where we were, I mean, we, we did it as a beta group. We called it a beta group. Like we, we had a group of, 12 or it was literally the third it was literally the third one we did yeah so we were we were new to it so we may have been really really harsh I, and I in my memory is that we were we were not harsh we were just very direct, direct. yeah very direct we didn't pull any punches which some people some people respond well to that some people don't like Russ Nesevich was the very first person and he's crushing it you know and he responds well to that I think but mm. not everybody does, and and so you're, you're a, you, we did have to learn early on to kind of back off a little bit. Sometimes you can't go straight in. Sometimes you have to. I was I was telling, um, I think I was talking to Chris Nicholson, and I, I was talking about how you're effective at like I want to jump right to the answer because sometimes I can just see it right away, and I wanted I want to just want to get to the answer. But you're really good about kind of softening them up a little bit. Let's let's massage this a little bit because you know we got to kind of this was this isn't one we can go straight to. Got to kind of let because uh, part of it is you got to let them come to the conclusion, right? It's not mm -hmm. it's not you like a, jur like a jury. Yeah, so you can't. It's, it's, I, we could tell a lot of people what to do. A lot of it's like they've got to come to that conclusion, otherwise they're not going to do it. And so that's part of it. So so this is funny because when Amani and I first got married, we read this book called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And basically the book posits that for the most part, men like to just cut to the chase, figure out the answer. Now this is very stereotypical, right? Men and so, and women like to talk something through. They like to look at it from all angles. They like to take their time and sort of think about it, talk about it. And so Amani and I realized quickly that she was much more like men on that spectrum. And I was much, at least the way he framed it in the book. So I think that, I think where you rest and, and this is true with employees where you have to come down is curiosity. You don't have to beat someone over the head. You don't have to tell them they're so dumb. Like Amani has asked me many times, what'd you what was like in therapy today? And I was like, well, we just talked about stuff and we talked about this. We talked about that. And she's like, I think that if I was a therapist, I'd be a great therapist. Cause I would just tell people how to solve all their problems and they wouldn't need to come after, come back to me after like two weeks. So that's bad for business, Amani. That's not good for business. <laughs> that's true. So curiosity, I think is where you land. So it's not that I know everything. It's just like, you might know everything, but you had to, we, you and I, we had to learn it ourselves. And so, you know, it's great. One of the great benefits of being in the guild and having the podcast is that people are able to learn from our struggles and our mistakes and our wins and our things that we streamlined and all that stuff. But when it comes to making fundamental change, the people are going to have to decide it on their own. The th your thing about curiosity, it is so true. If you think about just your everyday life, think about how much curiosity changes quite a bit. Where if you're not curious, if you're closed off, how like miserable things are but if you're curious about things and you're open to learning like just think about boredom just just ordinary everyday boredom if you instead of viewing things as being bored instead of being curious about your situation it does change quite a bit like it, it uh, that's something that it's interesting that we're talking about curiosity because joe rogan is some, he's someone that talks about this all the time he's like i'm just like this curious guy that just asks questions that's it and i I, and I've always liked that mindset. So recently, I've been I've been kind of taking that approach about curiosity of like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I just want to be curious. I'm just gonna ask questions. I'm I'm not gonna talk in this situation. I'm just gonna ask questions. And it is interesting how just your everyday life kind of changes. Where there isn't really boredom. Like boredom doesn't exist. There is not no being agitated about the situation. It's it's just being curious about the situation. So curiosity can solve a lot of problems. Well, and don't forget, people are uncomfortable with boredom these days. Like, we're used to being able to ask any question in the world with this phone. We're able to watch any movie we want in seconds. We can read any book. We can get unlimited content. So the the act of being bored and the act of sitting still and the act of thinking about things so as to lead to curiosity, it's it's becoming a lost art. No, I, I completely, I completely agree. Hey, I, I want, can we switch gears a little bit? All right. So I'm, 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 while you're, we're talking, I'm trying to get to, 
a good uh, good website. I went to ours. I've gone to a few others, but I no, there's no website that allows you to get like to the older episodes really quickly. Um, so I've I've got a Spotify. Spotify does. Oh, Spotify does. Okay, so I mean uh, on the phone at least. Okay, well. What I'm doing is I'm kind of going through all the episodes. Yeah. Because I just want to kind of go some you know, some some of the older ones and, and just kind of reminisce sure. a little bit. This is the anniversary episode after all. So I, right now, so I'm in, I'm in November of 2021. Let's see. Let's look at uh, Delegate Your Way to Freedom with Brett Tremblay. That, that was an interesting one. That was a good one. So the, what we did one in November of 2021 – the six things we know to be true with Jim and Tyson, and it's a, we have the explicit explicit uh, thing on there. So it means we were cussing. That's right. Do you remember any of the six things we know to be true? Um, no, but probably <laughs> probably the people are being too scared and they're too slow. That's yeah. So I'm looking at I'm like I'm at down at episode one, and it looks like. <laughs> do you know who our first guest ever was? Uh, I think I do. Um, was it, was it Jill Hewlett? No. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, actually, no, actually it was, uh, you're right. She was episode 16. I, I was thinking our first lawyer guest. First. And I'll okay. give you a hint. Hold it's on. not John Fisher. I thought it, it was. No, no. I, I knew it wasn't John Fisher. Cause what I, I remember though, I, we wanted to work our way up to John Fisher. That's what we wanted to do. Nice. Yeah. So I think I do know this. I just um, you'll be surprised. I'm I I'm not. I don't think it was this, but I'm going to say Bernard Nomberg. It was Mike Campbell. Oh, I I am surprised by that. I, I didn't know that. We had Lee Rosen episode twenty two. Lee Rosen came on. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, that was one of those guests we got early on that I was surprised by. That we, oh, we got Lee Rosen. Um, I I like that episode. Lee Rosen's a smart guy. We had Randall Ryder, and then Seth Price, and then John Fisher. So John was episode twenty-five. So Randall Ryder, that was that was interesting because I um, I felt like that was a good episode. He's a he's an author, right? Yeah, he was like our first like outside person who we didn't really know, uh, other than Lee Rosen, I guess. I, I thought that I I don't remember what was the title of that episode, or was it? Or did we just go by names back then? Um. The bad clients you don't take will be the best money you never made. Oh, that's a great time. Yeah, it is. A, it's a, that is um, a great. One. You know, this one, my my favorite, we talk about this many times, is Google search roulette where we we got on, we, we got on, oh my God, we got on Google. We typed in a practice area in a city and we came across some website that looked like it was built uh, – on Netscape Navigator, and that was by mere chance, though. Like, th- think about it. That was m- that was just by chance. That was you picking a city and me a practice area, or vice versa, and finding that uh, that that website. I I wish we you know what we need to do. We need to pull up what what, what episode is that? That's um, twenty nine. So we need to we need to at some point pull that up and see if that website still exists because that would be <laughs> awesome if it does. <laughs> Especially if it was the same. Yes. Uh, do you remember the city or the practice area? It was California. I think it was probably estate planning. We would always default to estate planning back then. Yeah, that was... Uh, so, you know, we need to do that sometime. We need to figure that out. We, I don't think we have time to do it today, but that would be an interesting. I'm, I'm going... Oh, you know what? This was one... Okay, so I, you'll remember this one. January 4th of 2022, John Jantz, marketing legend. I... Mm. That was one. It that was a. I, I, I had wanted to interview John Jance for a long time. Uh, just he's like one of those Mount Rushmore types when it comes to OG marketing. Now, duct tape he, marketing. Yeah, he's not a big name now, but it's, I just think he's getting a little bit older. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. We had um, Gary Berger, then Craig Goldenfarb, uh, Jason Osterley, Joey Vitale. Jill Nelson, I don't know who that is. And then the, the the episode that was the number one episode for most of Maximum Lawyer, do you remember whose it was? Yes, it was Will Norman. Yes, Will Norman's. I remember recording that. I was at my son. So that this was April of 2017. I was at one of my kids' soccer or softball practices. It was about sunset. 
and I recorded it on my phone um, while we were talking. I remember we recorded it at night. It went long. We went for an hour because we actually broke that up. The first episode's 45 minutes, and the second episode's 27 minutes. That's crazy that we went that long. We never – we. That's like one time ever we've done that. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was we did it twice. There's the guy I won't mention who it is. Oh yeah, they talked. Yeah, <laughs> he talked. We were, that was brutal. if I remember correctly, you and I asked one question each on the yeah, first part right. of it. It was yeah. so quick. Um, so October 18th, 2018, Paul Yokobitis. It was literally day one for his law firm. Mm, that was fun. So he and I talked a little bit about that last week or oh, during the week about that. And I, and I asked him if he thought he'd have the growth, um, that he's had. And he, it's interesting. Like he was, he didn't think he was, he'd have the growth that he had so quickly, but he was, I, he was confident in himself. And I think that that's, I think that's the way, I think that's the way to do it. So for our one year anniversary, the listeners took over the show and they gave one big tip on marketing or running their own law firm. So we had Dan Ryan, Doug Biggs, Chris Finney, Gary Berger, Joey Vitale, John Fisher, Joanne Holmes, Larry Weinstein, Matt Jett, Matt Vianello, and Bertrand. Remember Bertrand from Luxembourg? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Bertrand. I wonder what Bertrand's up, up to. That's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, so I, it's funny because I'm scrolling. I'm still back to only back to 2018. That's how many episodes there are. So Kelsey was episode 20, uh, 77. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Locke, 76. Uh, Chris, it was funny. And I and I apologize to the people that I don't remember you, but Chris Homer, I don't I don't remember yeah. who that is. He was with that. He was with, he's a good dude. He's with that, that agency. It's an SEO agency out of like Cincinnati. He's a good dude. Yes. I know who you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah, I, that was a good I, episode. I just didn't remember Chris's uh, last name. So there was one, uh, Jason corner. I, he's a guy, he's a buddy of mine in St. Louis. I actually really did enjoy that episode. He, he's a, He's a nice guy, and he, we talked a little bit about business. I, I think that was the first time I'd ever really talked about business with him. He's a he's a good dude. There are a lot of people on here we met through Mitch Jackson, Alicia, Nicole. I think that's how I met Morris. Bill Ellis is a guy. He's a marketing or a branding guy in St. Louis. Um, I think I met him through B&I. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also a yeah. – uh, Wayne Pollock, really interesting business model. I think Wayne uh, – he's still doing it. Um, and he does, was it, uh, was it Copo marketing or Copo? No, not marketing. Yeah. He does like P- PR, PR for bigger firms and like, like the ABA kind of law. Firms. Right. Um, Michael Liner, that guy's, he's got a machine going. Um, he's out of Cleveland. We had Bob Berg on. That was yeah, good. That's Bob Berg was fantastic. Uh, he, we've had him on a couple times now. Really good episode. Uh, let's see. William Eady. Um, the episode tw- uh, 61, the 10 things lawyers should say no to. I want to go back and listen to that one. That's good. Yeah. One. All right. I'll, I'll stop scrolling before we start to wrap up any, any takeaways from, from the years. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that we've been going since 2016. Well, how old is Hudson? Hudson is eight years old. So Hudson was, born in june of 2016 so um, so then we started the podcast in july holy crap i had not thought about that so he is yeah so the <laughs> whole time that he has been alive this podcast has been going that's yeah pretty much incredible the um wow i hadn't thought about that yeah and uh i mean if you think, think about okay so your kids like just think about how the, all the pictures yeah, so 2016 yeah, so 2016, my oldest was 14. Now he's living in San Diego. And then, so Noor, what it, she would have been, what, five? Uh, 2009. Seven. seven. So seven years old. So I, it's just like they were tiny. They were all just little tiny. Yeah. Emma was a, a, a was a baby. Hudson was a brand new baby. Jackson in 2016 would have been five. How about your firm? How how big was your firm in 2016? Ooh, in 2016. What? Let's see. I had I, I had at the time it was Angie and Kelsey I think so it was the three of us so quite a bit different <laughs> yeah I think it was I think it was Marwan Adela and I and I think there were three of us and I think I think we were cruising towards a million dollars 
if I had to guess. Maybe, maybe, maybe less. Let's see, back 26. Yeah. Because 20, 2012, I was broke. 2016 would be, so then 2020. Yeah, I would say, yeah, we were probably close to a million by then. Interesting. So back, I think in 2016, I was probably around 300, 350, right around there. Yeah. Quite a bit yeah. different than than today. Yeah. Today, it's interesting to think. To, it, what's cool, what's, here's what's great. You and I are going to be able to go back. We have all this documented, right? So we'll be able to go back from the very beginning and look and see just the how things have progressed and i think that 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 is the greatest gift one of the greatest gifts for max and laura maybe the greatest gift is that our kids can take all of this and listen to it and we'll, we will live forever for them and i think that that's on yeah apple. on apple <laughs> as long we do we well we we'll have to make sure we keep it the uh, we used to keep it all in a google drive or something but now we don't we don't have all that now it's just in the yeah. cloud somewhere. Any, any final words I'll just say for the record, you you got those noise canceling headphones, but I've heard every car that went by during the podcast. So, so oh, there you go. Uh, that that's yeah, the noise cancellation didn't work. I guess. That's funny. Uh, all right, let's wrap things up for all of you that have not given us a review and you've been listening for this long. Listen, we've been doing it since 2016. This is this is my my plea to you. That if you if, will, you please give us a five star review. We we would really really appreciate it. The we have put a lot of work into this. Uh, this has been a lot of uh, I won't say blood sweat and tears, but a lot of work, a lot of passion gone into this. So it would be helpful. And I'm really pissed off that we someone gave a couple people just gave us one star reviews without leaving a comment, and so it dropped us to four point nine. So. If, so to those people, they can kiss my ass. Yeah, but um, for the rest, yeah, for the rest of you, I would love it if you'd give us a five star review. It really would mean a lot. All right, I'm going to skip the rest of the stuff and just jump right into the the tip and hack. So, Jimmy, what's your hack of the week? So, I picked up a book that I didn't think had anything to do with running a business. My one of my heroes is a guy named Marty Baron. Do you know who that is? You probably have never heard of him. No. So Marty Baron was the editor in chief of the Boston Globe when they uh, broke the story of the Catholic sex abuse scandal in Boston. And there's a movie called Spotlight, which is great. It tells the whole story. It actually won Best Picture. And in the movie, it's played by Liv Schreiber. Well, Marty Baron was the editor in chief who sort of bucked the church and went ahead and published the story and. And for that, I'll always be grateful. But he also then left to go to the Washington Post. And he was at the Washington Post uh, before Jeff Bezos bought it. He was there when they decided to publish the Edward Snowden stuff. And then he was there during all the fighting with Trump during the first presidency. So it's his new book. And I'm reading it just more for the historical stuff. But uh, Jeff Bezos just bought the paper. And, you know, it's interesting because newspapers obviously are a legacy media form that was ripe for disruption. Marty Baron lived through the effects of the disruption at the Boston Globe and the Miami Herald before that, and then, of course, at the Washington Post. So the chapter where Bezos comes in and talks about how he's going to change the business model from being um, advertising-focused to low subscription costs, high number of subscribers, the chapter on his thinking and the way he does it, it's worth reading the book just for that. You could stop after paragraph after chapter two, but just seeing how Jeff Bezos's mind works and how he's going to take this legacy thing. I think it will, it'll pique your interest on ways that you can be disruptive in, in what we're doing as law firm owners. I've been fascinated by the Jeff Bezos purchase of WAPO. I really have. And I, and I know it takes time, but he's owned it for a few years now, and it has not been doing well. So it, it kind of reminds me, and I'm not saying he's not going to turn it around, but because his mind does work a certain way that ours just doesn't, right? Uh, but I, it almost reminds me, though, of when a a, real, a billionaire comes in and buys a football team and mm-hmm. says, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to turn this thing around and mm-hmm. throws a bunch of money at it, and the team sucks. Like, Thing about the Washington Redskins, which is now the what is it? What is it, what's the name of it now? The Commanders. The Commanders, right? It's 
you had uh, that owner, and I think it bought it in like '01 or around that time, and just threw money at, it, threw money at, it, threw money at it, and it, they were never successful. I hope that's not what happens with with Wapo because uh, Wapo is a it's a historic paper, right? right. It is an that's, absolute. That's why I bought it. Yep. Yeah. It's a historic paper. That's probably not why I bought it. He probably, he probably bought it so he'd have his own media company that he can control uh, to some extent. But either way, I still hope that it does succeed. And I am curious. That, and so I'm, I, I, I am going to read that because I am, I do want to watch. I've been watching what Bezos is doing and I, and I am curious to see how things are, are going to turn out. But Well, the funny thing is, the, so in the, in the movie Spotlight, Liv Schreiber plays Marty Baron, and then Liv Schreiber narrates this book. So it's really because, you know, he does the hard knock, so he's got a great voice. So it's really sort of strange to hear the character who played him being the narrator. But when Bezos comes in, the first thing he wants is metrics for everybody. Like, like reporters were appalled at the idea that they would be measured. Like, and he measured it like, are you contributing to the profit of the newspaper and he he asked these I, iconoclastic questions like are big investigative journalism pieces the things to go and he came in this really drove them all crazy he said what can we learn from the huffington post and business insider that are these news aggregators and the reporters were all just like so it really reminded me when i was listening to the blowback from the reporters it was like listening to like old guard lawyers who say oh yeah we're we're a profession we don't really do things like that that's why i really liked it so you're, the, I think what I'm about to say is may surprise you quite a bit. I 100% agree with all those reporters. I I think that yeah, sure. Th- sure. This is a deeper thing with democracy. Like this comes yeah. for me, it comes down to democracy and the the what we've seen over the last couple decades. I think has a lot to do with the the Dumbing lack down. of in, yeah the, well and the lack of investigative journalism. Uh, yeah. The the investigative journalism is what has cracked those major stories in history. Where yeah, but if the newspapers are broke, that's that's why it's such a yeah, great yeah. dilemma. If the newspaper papers are broke, they don't have the money to do that stuff. Yeah, and that's what it, that's what does make this uh, an incredible dilemma. You're right. Um, where on one end you've got these defenders of democracy that can't make money. And on the other end, it's just these fluff pieces that people so for clicks, kind of like almost like BuzzFeed that uh, it's not doing well. So there, you, there you is read a middle it, ground. You read it and tell me what you think. I I actually think so. He spent two hundred fifty million dollars on it, which is chump change for him. So I I really think he viewed it as a as a. Uh, I mean, sure it was a media play. Sure it puts him in, in the in the hot seat in uh, D.C., Marty Baron pretty much suggests that Bezos stayed out of editorial-type stuff, not like Rupert Murdoch coming into the Wall Street Journal and trying to put his thumb on the scale. I really think Jeff Bezos viewed it a little bit as, like you said, saving that beacon of democracy and, and seeing if he could make it work. I hope he does. I, I'll, yeah. I'll take it. Out. I'll check it out, and I'll let you know what I think. But uh, that's, I, I think that's, this is an interesting part of the conversation. I think this is... Um, just that's just off of your hack, and now that we know that, my uh, my tip is not going to sound nearly as cool. Mine is shocker it has to do with AI. Uh, there's a guy I follow on on X that is it's uh, the samurai, and the last last two letters are AI. So samurai, I think it's like a really clever name. So it's the samurai, and the actual handle though is. Samurai Preneur is what it is. This guy is this guy is you great. Preneur on everything. Exactly. Um and Samurai apparently. So uh he he he's I I like the names. But he's got he, he always talks about this thing. He talks about AL Tom but called uh, Chat L L M and he talks about it being better than GPT and Claude and Gemini and all that. And I I've I've tested it out. What it does is it combines all of those essentially. So it is better because it combines everything, and that's that's at least that's what it looks like it does. But it, it is a it is a really cool tool. So if if you all are used to like using ChatGPT and all that on your phone, it's a better version of that because you can it just gives you access to far more. You don't you don't don't just use ChatGPT. You're using you can use all of the other services too, which is pretty cool. That's, what I, that's all I got, brother. Uh, you and I are going to be um, doing the Saturday morning show for the Guild in 17 minutes. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, buddy. I'll see you in a little bit. Good stuff. Hey, man. 
Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your hosts and to access more content, go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time. Before you go, have you heard Jim and Tyson talk about the Guild on the podcast or in the Facebook group? If not, you're missing out on some really exciting things happening with Guild members and their law firms. The Guild includes a community, accountability, trainings, group coaching, and in-person events like our quarterly masterminds. Inside, you'll gain support, tap into a network of connections, and continue learning, a common theme among successful entrepreneurs. Investing in a community is like the self-care of business ownership. Surrounding yourself with other people who get it is crucial when you're creating a rock-solid foundation to build your business on, one that's strong enough to withstand setbacks, transitions, and growth. So head to MaximumLawyer.com forward slash the guild to join now and get started today.